Pringles, one of the best snacks if you ask me, are a mathematical masterpiece. Or, at least, the shape they're modeled after is. The hyperbolic paraboloid. Hopefully, we are all familiar with this shape, having seen it in many math classes, models, or at least in chapter 13 of our textbook. But, where does this shape come from? And where does it appear in everyday life? Is there anything inherently special about it? Well, strap on your seatbelts and get ready for a deep dive into hyperbolic paraboloids. To understand the applications of a shape like this, we must first understand how the shape is made. I know we all know this, but here's a brief overview. Z is equal to AX squared plus BY squared, where A and B have different signs. The variable with the positive coefficient represents the axis that has cross sections of a positive parabola, and the variable with the negative coefficient represents the axis that has negative parabolas as cross sections. As the absolute value of A or B increases or decreases, that axis becomes more or less steep, respectively. Now for some new stuff. One of the most interesting phenomenons about hyperbolic paraboloids is their continuously negative Gauss curvature. Gauss curvature, useful in differential geometry, is found by taking the product of the two principal curvatures. I won't go into too much detail, as I could easily talk about curvature for the whole time, but to remain negative and fulfill the equation, one of the curvatures must be positive and the other negative. As seen here, if both k1 and k2 are positive or are both negative, the output will be positive. One good model to represent Gauss curvature, overly simplified but still good, is to take a sheet of paper. A sheet of paper has no curvature. Hopefully that is easy to see. But you can twist it and bend it and change its shape in any way, short of breaking it, and its Gaussian curvature remains zero. Then, if you take a sphere and try and bend the paper to fit the shape, you can't do it. The paper starts to bulge and does not sit flush on the sphere. The same issue map makers have been experiencing for centuries. Because this sphere has positive curvature, you are left with too much paper. On the other hand, if you take a hyperbolic paraboloid model like this, more about it later, and try to fit the paper to it, you have too much paper on the positive parabola axis and not enough on the negative parabola axis. This is caused by the hyperbolic paraboloid having negative curvature. But where do we find this amazing shape in real life? What about in architecture or in everyday objects? Is it the meaning of life and the universe? Well, unfortunately, the universe has been found to either have no curvature or positive curvature so we know it is not the shape of our happening hyperbolic curve. But architecture? A quick Google search. Oops, wrong slide. And ta-da. They're everywhere. On top of looking absolutely amazing, we can see the hyperbolic paraboloid is used all over the place in architecture. And there is a reason for this. If we look back at the model from earlier, we can see that it is made entirely of straight lines. Unlike spheres or parabolas, where straight lines can only create an approximate model, hyperbolic paraboloids have been modeled correctly with only straight lines. This unusual attribute for curves, being doubly ruled, allows for use in construction to be much easier than modeling typical curves, while still creating the fun, futuristic vibe the architect is looking for. But where else? Well. There are roughly 100 hyperbolic parabolas in every normal sized Pringles can. As I mentioned before, these tasty treats are physical models of our shape, and there too is a reason for this. Initially, I was under the impression that Pringles were made in the shape to distinguish themselves from other chip brands, and while this is partially true, the main reason that Mr. Frederick J. Bauer used the design was chip protection. There are no breakpoints on a saddle curve, as the shape is informally known by, and therefore the chips remain fully intact when stacked upon one another. 
Also, the snug fit means that the Pringles are not able to shift during shipping, further protecting them from accidental damage. I just knew there were world-changing properties with hyperbolic paraboloids. Finally, saddles. Created in the 7th century BC by the Sarmatians, a large group of people located in what is now southwest Russia and Ukraine, saddles have been found. Finally, saddles. First created in the 7th century BC by the Sarmatians, a large group of people located in what is now southwest Russia and Ukraine, saddles have been around for a very long time, and as such, have had a long time to develop. Initially, saddles were more similar to our favorite shape, being made of not much more than a piece of cloth or leather raised at the front and back that hung down the sides of a horse's back. But over time, saddles have progressed far past the point of all being one common shape, and no longer are they representative of our shape in question. Curse this new generation with their new ideas. Well, it'd be more of curse the past 100 generations, but my point remains the same. The truth is, apart from architecture, Pringles, and, kind of, saddles, hyperbolic paraboloids are found in disappointingly few applications of life. But I'm sure there are other applications that are just yet to be discovered, ones that will truly change the world. And this is where I leave the question to you. Whichever one of you will take it upon yourself to explore the possibilities of what can be done, which one of you will change the world with the best mathematical shape, with hyperbolic paraboloids? Just make sure to tell me what your idea is so I can get credit for it.